This video is going to be all about how to deal with harsh criticism. This video was funded by my supporters on Patreon. They're getting access to extra content and other nice perks. So if this interests you, please click the link in the description and consider helping out the channel. I took a step back from this issue and I really thought about the different approaches that people take. I'm an artist who makes 2D animations, so I'm coming from that place. However, I have made this advice applicable to any type of creator. So in my opinion, the best thing that you can do to help yourself in this is to know yourself. If you know yourself, you can navigate these character problems to your advantage. And so it's all about self mastery here. So I'm going to go through some of the archetypes that you can typically find in people. And I want you to try and identify which of these archetypes you are. From that, it should help you to uh, get further in this. So we're going to start off with the worst and then go up to what I think is the best kind of archetype for a person to be to receive criticism. First off, we have the weakling archetype, the person who gives up when their art is heavily criticized. And my advice for this, uh, it's the most pathetic archetype. It will mess you up in the long run. So you're going to want to fix this mindset as soon as possible. So moving to any other mindset is better than staying on this one. The prickly archetype. This person will defend their work vigorously when anything even slightly critical is mentioned with excuses, retorts, complaints, shifting blame to others and some other counter criticism. They get confrontational and often consider criticism as a direct insult to them as a person. They imagine everyone in a sort of leaderboard and that criticism to them somehow knocks them down a few pegs on this imaginary leaderboard. It's uh, not good at all to have this. Next we have the self-hater archetype. The person who hates their own work more than anyone else and only focuses on negatives all of the time. This appears to generally be used as a coping mechanism for artists. It sets the bar really low for them to jump over and exceed every time. So they don't need to suffer from criticism because they kind of beat the other person to it. Also, they can use it to fish for compliments. So my advice for this, I would say that it's a bit unhealthy if you put hard work and care into something, you should be proud of it. And it's natural to feel like that. And it's good to feel like that. Still, the self-hater also has a lot of potential since in this state of self-hate, you're not blind to the shortcomings of your work and therefore you're in a good position to fix them. That is, as long as you can muster the enthusiasm to actually improve. If you're not faking it, you might be in danger of falling back into the weakling archetype, which as we know, is one of the worst archetypes for you to be. The apathetic archetype. So this is the person who just doesn't care at all. So it's extremely rare and it's often fake. It's kind of, again, people will fake this archetype. So my advice for this, if it's real, you can be very effective as an independent artist. It will mean that you progress at a slower pace than everyone else, but you will not be led astray on the way to your creative goals. It's probably not the best archetype if you're working in a collaborative environment. And of course, you don't uh, grow as fast, but you can still grow. The rebound archetype. The person who's positively energized by criticism. It makes you eager to improve and make much better work. So if you play this well, you can really work it to your advantage. You can get a nice little energy boost whenever you need it. But just be careful that you're making art for yourself because it's a creative release for you. That should be the reason that you're making art. Don't create art for petty reasons such as wanting to prove someone else wrong. The cool archetype. This is what I would say is the best archetype. This is the kind of person who has no problem taking feedback on board and making changes to his or her work style. 
They have an emotional distance from their work when the time comes to receive feedback and this allows them to look at the work objectively. They only act on feedback which helps to achieve their personal goal with the work, whether this is to make it more original, more popular, more refined, more tailored to the client's needs. The cool archetype already has an understanding of what he wants and knows where they can get the information to make it better. The cool archetype is self-motivated. The enthusiasm to create his piece of work already exists inside. He's grounded in his pursuit. Nothing anyone can say will deter him from his creative direction, yet he is humble enough to ask for help when he needs it. I think this is the kind of archetype we should all strive towards. I think it can take a lot of work to mold your character into this, and it is okay if you still lean towards one of the other lower archetypes, especially if they are one of the last three that I listed. As a side note, you should keep in mind that different fields of work can require slightly different archetypes. For example, fine artists tend to not give a damn about people's opinion, or they only care about the opinions of a very small margin of people. In a commercial studio, you need to be very respectful of your boss's opinion. It's not the kind of thing you can just shrug off. Similarly, when freelancing and working for a client, your primary goal is to make the client happy, so you really need to take their words seriously. If you're making popular content to be consumed by large target audiences, you would need to gather large amounts of data and read into what's the most successful in order to appeal to the masses. So you can see how there's room for variation in how well an archetype serves you. So now that I've gone through all of the archetypes I know, let's go on to some more general points of advice. Filters. So the problem with a lot of people is that they don't have a filter system. You need an extra step in the input here. During this filter stage, you will be questioning the validity of this feedback. Some examples of filter questions could include, is this person part of my target audience? If not, does that affect how they will see the film or piece of art, whatever you're dealing with? Does this critic have the same taste in artwork as me? Is this person just saying it is great because they're, we're friends? With this filter, you can make sure that you're not led astray by people. The only time you're obliged to act on criticism is when someone is paying you. Other than that, you have the complete freedom to privately scrap their idea if you think it's not right. But you need to have a valid reason why you choose to dismiss their criticism. Another point, don't make excuses. Excuses are a shield that your ego uses to protect itself. Your ego only cares about status about what other people think of you here and now. It doesn't care about your long-term goals, such as if you have a goal to become the greatest artist in your field of work, your ego won't care about that because it's a an instinct that's ingrained into you that's been evolved to work that way. You are not your work. You must detach yourself from your work. The work was made by you, but it is not you. You must adopt this thinking when criticism is made. Take note of what they say. If it was framed in an irrational way, you must try to rationalize it. If it was not constructive, ask them. What do you mean by that? Please elaborate. It can all be used as data to make you more successful in the long run. It is not their work. If you get a lot of contrasting feedback from different people, prepare yourself. This might unground you. You might get confused over the direction you're going in. So the solution to this is filter every one of those comments and finally make sure that the change you make is fundamentally what you want. If you're steering the ship, you need faith in your own ideas and your own preferences. See criticism as an opportunity. Even if you get roasted and it feels terrible, it's often an opportunity to improve your skills or learn more about your artwork. For example, you might not agree with someone's critique and therefore you might understand that a certain group of people will not enjoy your work and that's okay. Not everyone has to enjoy your work. 
remember to go check out my Patreon page. With your help, I can continue to create new videos like this one every two weeks, and you get extra videos, downloads, early access, and more perks. Thank you so much to my Patreons who are currently supporting me. Check out Joel Ukeni. The link to his Instagram is in the description. Also, you can check out our website, animatorguild.com. Also, as a PS side note, let me know if you would like to see a video on how to give a critique to someone else's work without hurting their feelings or damaging them, because that's a video that I've been thinking of making. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.